Alrighty, today is, um, today is Primer Day. This grey stuff is uh, eco fill. The objective is to fill the weave with, um, uh, with this material. Uh, it does a couple of things. It, it um, is, gives you UV protection uh, to the fabric. It also is to some extent a fire retardant. So it won't burn. It might melt, but it won't burn. Uh, so it's pretty much done. It needs to be um, it needs to be sanded. Which I, to do that, I'm using this uh, purple um, Scotch Bright pad. I'm sorry, I can't see what I'm doing. We go up there. We might be able to see what I'm doing. You might be able to see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I'm using this maroon-coloured uh, Scotch-Brite pad, uh, or you can use 320 grit um, uh, sandpaper. But it's a very light sanding. Try not to sand the rivets. Try not to cut the daylights out of the pinking, the pink edges. Um, it, yeah, it's just a very light, uh, a very light sanding. Not much more than this. I've already done the leading edge. I've been along the leading edge and done that. I'll do each of these and then I'll come around to the, because I can't reach all the way over there, I'll come around and do the other side. But uh, the next, the reason I'm doing this is so that I can be ready to paint uh, the primer. And the primer in this case is white colour. You've, if you've been watching for a while, you would have seen that I put primer on the structure underneath the fabric. That's the same primer, the exact same water-based uh, primer called Eco Primer. So that's what goes on next and of course being a light colour, this grey is beautiful, I love it. But being a light colour it will cover all of the defects. It will bring them out like there's no tomorrow so I can't wait for that. But anyway, that's what we that's what, that's what we have to face. There's bound to be defects, or well, there is defects, there's no question. There's defects. But just how much they stand out will be revealed in the next few hours, I suppose. Yeah, this is not very difficult to do. It really isn't. The Once I've dusted this, uh, it needs to be uh, wiped down with a, a clean, a clean um, tack uh, cloth uh, with, um, with some isopropyl alcohol, not water. We used water on the, on the green stuff that's underneath here, on the Eco Bond, when I put that on, but not this. This uh, actually absorbs water. So we don't want that. That, that will uh, appear in the future to be a bad thing. So we need to use alcohol. Now, uh, pure alcohol, it's really, at our hardware store, it's really, really expensive. Like $27 for half a litre. Uh, and half a litre is sort of like next to nothing. Uh, basically a, a spray bottle. Like a window cleaner or something like that is twenty-seven dollars. So no, I've managed to find another place on uh, on eBay, which is um, what was it, fifty bucks for two liters, I think. So it's coming. It'll be here in a few days. But I have managed to borrow some uh, pure alcohol off one of the neighbours. So that's where we're heading. So once I've finished this, I will blow it down with air. And then I will wipe it down with a clean cloth and some alcohol. On the up, isopropyl alcohol. You probably can't see what I do now because I'm not going to do anything, but I'll be back in a couple of seconds. It's grey though, I quite like it. Unfortunately, you can't. Unfortunately, it's not waterproof. 
uh, and, and it absorbs water and then probably falls to pieces once it's wet. So you can't put water on it. So you can't use it as a top coat. Um, so uh, yeah, it has to be covered. It has to be covered underneath and it gets covered underneath with the uh, eco bond, the blue stuff, the blue green stuff. And then it gets covered on top with either the primer or the top coat. So moisture can't get to it from the inside or from the outside. That's how it, that's how it is. But anyway, I'll bring you back later on if there's any advances. All right, I've decided to um, start work on the interplane struts. Um, I've already sanded them with the scotch bright, and I'm just going to wipe them down with some alcohol I'll probably stop at that point and have some lunch and let them dry properly because it'll obviously take a little bit of time. I'm not going to slurp it on there. It's going to be on fairly thin, but it's still going to take a bit to dry, especially, especially in our uh, winter temperatures that we're having at the moment. Um, and then this afternoon I'll come and do my best to put some, some uh, white primer on them. If, uh, if, if the conditions, you know, still look to be okay. Let me just grab the, meth the, uh, the alcohol. This is all I have right now. Obviously it's way more than I'm going to need. But uh, it's, um, these interplane struts were a bit difficult to cover because it's got all weird angles and stuff all over the place. They're also covered with the light, uh, the light grey uh, fabric, but they're really, the covering's really not as nice as the covering on the wing. It just, it just hasn't turned out as nice. We'll see how we go. If it doesn't look uh, good, then I'll redo them. It's pretty much as simple as that. I've probably learned a lot more since I did these than what I knew back then. Uh, and it wasn't very many weeks ago either. But anyway, this is the, uh, this is the uh, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. And um, we're just gonna dampen a cloth with that a little, a little bit. And just uh, gently wipe it across the surface. But yeah, the, the instructions are very specific to say not to use water. They don't, they don't want you putting water near here. Now I'd say that's probably a lot, what I'm putting on there. So I don't want to get too carried away. I don't want any more than that. Yeah, I don't think there's any grey on the, on the cloth. A little bit. It's a little bit, so uh, obviously there is stuff coming off it. Yeah, you won't be able to see that, but it's a tiny bit. Okay, I'll do the top side of this one first, and then I'll come back and turn them both over. Sorry for all you uh, Canadians who are sweltering in 20 degree heat out there. It must be terrible. There we go.
show you that in a second. Here's the tack cloth. You're not going to be able to see that. Okay, what if we point you towards the light and we try and look through? That's a bit better. Yeah, there's a little bit of grey on there, but not, uh, not a huge amount, I would have said. Yeah, it looks a bit dirty. Hopefully it comes up on the video. It may not, but anyway. That's, uh, that's it. Let's, uh, let's see how we... All right, we're, um, we're going to try and paint this um, interplane strut. I've just put a mist coat on the other um, strut and it seems to have gone okay. Um, I will come back later on once this is dried and I'll put a much uh, heavier coat on but for now uh, it's just uh, a mist coat I think which is going to be the order of the day let's see how it goes at least it's nice and warm in the paint shop here A lot warmer than it is outside, I'll tell you what. So yeah, just a mist uh, coat. Oops, that's a bit heavier than mist, but anyway. bumping these dowels along here in there that one's already done now that's pretty good and over there Okay. Yep, that'll do. Good. Looks good.
This one looks good. This was uh, how they say to test it. Put the back of your finger against it. If it doesn't come off on there, then it's ready to recoat. Okay. So this is uh, this is really only the primer. It's not the actual finished coat. So once it's dry properly tomorrow, uh, it'll be sanded again and then it'll be painted with the actual top colour, the top coat. Yep, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. for a, a normal weekly update. Here's my uh, paint shop, which, um, which I bought the other day. Uh, it's just simply too cold. It's too cold for the paint to go off. So I built this little humpy and um, a couple of uh, heat lamps in here. I've got a little turbo heater, but I'm not sort of even needing to use that. It gets up just with the lights. Um, I painted the I've painted the primer on these on these uh, two interplane struts. So it's they've had all of their uh, all of their high build primer, um, the the um, eco fill, the eco bond and now the um, Eco Prime, which is the white stuff. And the only reason we put the white stuff on is because there's a, a light color um, finish to go on top of them. Tomorrow, but maybe the next day, these will hopefully turn orange. Um, I've had a fair bit of 
running around this week collecting um, collecting bits and pieces um, to carry on with the with the build. Um, this is the this is the the main user of all my time this week. This is the, my engine cow. This is the only piece here. The only piece of cow that I'm actually using the, the original. The rest of it's uh, discarded, basically. You remember I've shown I've shown you this a few times where we've gone around and we've get get the profile sorted out with this uh, boomerang. Well, um, I've pretty much got that now. The objective now is to use this um, filler, which is uh, uh, it's not in here. I put it I put it outside, but it's uh, the stuff that you do uh, drywall with. I'll build that up and sand it down and get it to where it's exactly the right shape. And then this blue bit, which is the original foam, that'll get cut out. And then this will be fiberglassed over. That's the, that's the plan of attack for, for the next couple of weeks. I sat down this morning with my expert neighbour and ordered the the glass and the resin and all the other consumables and so on uh, to actually finish this to finish this off in fiberglass so the fiberglass will actually join on to the original fiberglass and it'll come up and it'll stop about about around the edge of the blue bit i'm not there's no need to fiberglass into the middle it'll only be to about there and then this will obviously fit this will connect to the fuselage uh, the engine, the back of the engine where the mounts go will pick up about there, there, there and there at the four corners of that blue bit. Uh, and then this will be trimmed, the fiberglass will be trimmed off so that it just barely uh, clears the, um, the engine properly. So the plan, the plan's coming together. It is, believe it or not, it is working. Um, but it's going to be slow and this is going to be slow. There's, there's low patches and stuff. Not, not that I think it really matters too much, but um, you know, we, you don't want to start with a, a bad situation. We want to, I want to make it as good as I possibly can. Looks like a big, uh, big cake, doesn't it? But anyway, that's, uh, that's where we. Um, there's, <laughs> there's about 30 seconds of fuselage. Uh, let's have a quick look. No progress on this wing. It's it's still um, primer. When the paint shop's clear and 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 so on and clean, then I'll put this in there and I'll put the uh, the the primer, the white coloured primer, the same as the interplane struts. It'll go on this on the wing as well, and then the wing will get the final colour. Then you'll, find, you'll probably finally, you'll probably see the actual final uh, colour of the aeroplane then. You've already seen the orange bit. The orange is just for the accents. Remember this and the, and the uh, instrument panels? That, that colour orange, those, um, those interplane struts that go here will uh, be that orange colour pretty soon. Over, over, over here, I'm getting ready. There's still some structure that I haven't, um, that I haven't completed. Um, here on the undercarriage, there's drill goes something like that between that, between this brace and be, and the main gear leg goes in here, which which is what I'll use to attach the fabric to because the gear legs are fabric. And then this other piece, which is a slightly different shape, will run from about, as a diagonal, it'll run from about there to about the mid position on the brace. I've still got to do that. It's really not a big job, but it's another job. Oh. A, a plan of attack for the 
uh, for these wing root fairings. And they, the wing root th fairings are, have been a, you know, a pain right from day one. Got to get rid of that gap. So the, my intention is to cut from here across to somewhere on here. And I'll, I'll do a, a, you know, a bit better job of working that out. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it'll run down to here somewhere. But anyway, I'll cut it. Bring the, the bottom up to it until it touches the, uh, the underside of the leading edge there. And, and then join the two back together again. So they'll, uh, basically I'll cut a piece out of here and, and reduce that down and, and, and rejoin that piece. I'll, that needs to be done on both sides. So that's uh, that's it. That's it for the for the week. Uh, it's been cold. Uh, yeah, well, cold for us, um, and cold for the paint. Cold for the um, uh, yeah, right. Not it's not raining at the moment, but it's not far away from it. Yeah, it's been cold for the uh, for the paint. The paint doesn't want to go off. That um, whatever that that uh, mud type stuff that I'm putting on the cow, um, it doesn't particularly want to go off as well. That's why the heat lamps are on. I'll leave them on for another probably another couple of hours while I have dinner and so on, and then I'll come down and shut them shut them off. Uh, yeah. So there, you are, no big deal. Uh, also, not a great deal deal of work either. This is some of the some of the plaster plaster mud that I've that I've been building the cowl up with. So hopefully the the materials that I ordered today, hopefully they'll arrive next week. Um, I don't know. I doubt I'll be ready. I don't. I doubt I'll be ready to. Um, uh, to do any any uh, fiberglassing until probably the week after next. But anyway, now you're uh, you're as caught up as I am. Here we go. This wing, of course, is still waiting its turn. It once this wing is painted, yeah, once it's been painted, then this one, which is all virtually at the same stage except for the paint it will come into these um, stands this one will this one will get wrapped up and put aside somewhere uh, the other wing will come onto these stands and it'll go through the same process that process won't take very long actually i've got it pretty well sussed now um, the learning curve at first was a bit was a bit vicious but um, it's uh, I've got it pretty well sorted out now what I need to do to paint a, a wing. Once the tail uh, is free, got that wing off the table, then I'll start of the um, components, some of the empennage components. I want them in the heavier fabric, the heavier gauge fabric, which is what this is. Um, but that'll happen. That'll and then, of course, the, the lower wings, they need to come off, uh, have the wing tips fitted, uh, and then they'll go through the whole shooting match where they get the primer on the metal parts, um, get washed and all the rest of it, and, and then start the covering process on them. So, no, it's, uh, it's, it's getting there, but it'll, it'll be, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be finished by next weekend sort of thing, so don't panic. All right, that's it. Bye now.